one group of major vowels in English is the front vowels. At the high end of the front uh, vowels we have E, which can be characterized as a high front tense unrounded vowel, found in a variety of words like teach, veet, leak, reap, and so forth. The ex it has an extreme high front position in the vowel quadrilateral, and vowels like this are sometimes called corner vowels or point vowels. Its articulation is very similar to a y uh, consonant. It's articulated by raising the jaw, fronting and raising the tongue, including bracing the tongue against the upper teeth, and also uh, some common uh, articulatory characteristics of all the vowels, such as the velopharyngeal port being closed, so the sound isn't nasal, and phonation in the larynx providing a sound source. In this articulatory configuration, the pharynx is a relatively open cavity because the tongue has been pulled forward and raised, uh, whereas there's a fairly tight constriction in the oral cavity. In some speakers, in stressed syllables, uh, there may be some change in the articulatory position of this vowel from uh, the E position to something more similar to the Y consonant, uh, making it a non-contrastive or minor diphthong. Here is an MRI image of a speaker producing an E vowel, in this case a female speaker. You can see the mass of the tongue has been fulled forward and fills in most of the oral cavity, leaving a narrow channel uh, for the sound to filter out through the lips, whereas the pharynx is relatively open. The uh, next lower front vowel is the I, uh, referred to as the small cap I vowel. It is also high and front, but lax and unrounded. It's found in words such as itch, win, bit, pick. It's the vowel that's typically present in ing uh, combinations before the ang consonant. It is usually the articulation before r where you think you might be hearing something like an e sound. So in the word hearing versus keyring, uh, there is an articulatory difference where keyring has a proper e production and hearing does not have that extreme uh, high front position. In some dialects of English, there is not an E versus E distinction before uh, nasals like N, so their production of thin and then would be the same. Uh, for some speakers, I is used in unstressed syllables at the ends of words uh, in uh, common speech. So rather than saying something like pretty, where it's said very clearly, uh, the production might be pretty um, and have an I-like sound at the end. Articulation is otherwise just like E, but it's not quite as extreme, and as a lax vowel, it's shorter in duration. Here from x-ray imaging are E versus I tongue positions, where you can see the E has a slightly higher uh, and slightly more forward tongue position. The uh, next lower front vowel is the A. Uh, it is the higher of the mid uh, front vowels. It is tense and unrounded, found in words like late, bay, sail, fade, in some speakers, A has a diphthong allophone, again a minor diphthong, a non-contrastive diphthong um, that you find in stressed syllables or in word final syllables, especially if that's an open syllable or if there is an alveolar content, consonant following. So the tongue position shifts slightly over the course of the vowel from A to a slightly higher position closer to I. The A is articulated by raising the jaw fronting and raising the tongue, but not so high as to contact the upper teeth. And again, standard articulatory characteristics for vowels of the velopharyngeal port being closed and phonation providing a sound source. The next lower front vowel is the E eh vowel, uh, referred to as epsilon. It is the lower of the mid front vowels. It is lax and unrounded, found in words like met, less, and fresh. Uh, in the first syllable of something like beverage. It's found before R, where you think you might be hearing an A sound, so in words like fair, care, or repair. Uh, 
if you try comparing your articulation, what you feel when you articulate bear versus something like bear aspirin, uh, there, if you produce that distinction clearly, uh, is a bit of an articulatory difference. Otherwise, the articulation is similar to A, but the uh, jaw and tongue body are a bit lower, and again, as a lax vowel, it's got a shorter duration. The lowest of the front vowels is the A, referred to as the ash digraph. It is a low front lax unrounded vowel, found in words like sad, fact, pass, or gag. It's found in uh, ng type words where you think you might be hearing an a or an e. So something like fain versus fang, blame versus bang, that is the a vowel, uh, though it's co-articulation with that nasal uh, does make it harder to identify. A is articulated by lowering the jaw and fronting and flattening the tongue, plus the usual closure of the nasal passage and phonation. Uh, in this image, we have a range of front vowels from E to E uh, to A, uh, showing their basically fronted tongue position with a relatively open pharynx, but differences in tongue height, and uh, that difference is caused by both tongue and jaw articulation, as you can see from the differences in lower lip position. Minimal pairs involving front vowels may help in your ability to identify them. A minimal pair is a sound where, or a word where there is only one sound difference uh, between two words that you're comparing. So in something like leap versus lip, we have the E vowel versus the I vowel, tape versus the first syllable in tepid, the A vowel versus the E vowel, tape versus tip for A versus I, Tense versus tins for e eh versus i, eh. bed versus bad for e eh versus a, eh. bid versus bed for i eh versus e, eh. beckon versus bacon for e eh versus a, eh. greed versus grade for e eh versus a. Eh. Uh, the other primary uh, category of um, uh, extreme vowels in English are the back vowels. Uh, at the highest end we have the oo vowel, a high back tense and rounded vowel, found in words like food, tool, roof, tube. It is the high back corner vowel, has articulation very similar to the w consonant. It's articulated by raising the jaw, raising and retracting the tongue body, and pursing and protruding the lips plus the usual closure of the nasal passage and phonation. Uh, when you look at this vowel, you get the vocal tract roughly divided into oral and pharyngeal cavities, uh, separated by the constriction created by tongue backing and raising near the soft palate. Here's an MRI image that shows that constriction in the region of the soft palate, plus the relatively open uh, oral and pharyngeal cavities, along with the pursing and protruding of the lips. The next lower back vowel is U, uh, referred to as upsilon. It is a high back but lax rounded vowel, uh, found in cook, good, butch, woof, foot, put. It's found before R, where you might think you hear the U sound, like in tour, or lure, uh, compared with something like fewer, where there's an, uh, a proper oo sound before the er. In some speakers, uh, the u uh sound is found before l instead of an oo. So in their dialect, they don't have a contrast between pull and pool, or full and fool, uh, which is a contrast I do have. Uh, the articulation for uh, uh is similar to oo, but less extreme and shorter in duration. The next lower back vowel is o. It is the higher of the mid back uh, vowels. It is tense and rounded, found in words like nope, go, folk, road, the first syllable in ocean, loan, home, stole. 
in some speakers, O is produced as a minor diphthong uh, that tends toward the U position that's found in stressed syllables or in word final syllables. O is articulated by raising the jaw, raising and retracting the tongue body, but not as much as it is for U or U, pursing and protruding the lips, plus the usual closure of the nasal passage and phonation. In the image on the right, we have from x-ray tracing uh, the distinction between the U and the O, where both the tongue raising and the lip constriction are more extreme for U than they are for O. The next lower back vowel is the aw, referred to as open O. It is the lower of the mid-back vowels. It is tense and rounded, found uh, in my dialect anyway, in words like saw, cause, straw, lost, thought, watch, long, dawn, off, mauve, gauze. Uh, in many dialects, this distinction is being lost, and the ah phoneme is used instead. In many speakers, uh, aw is found before r, where you might otherwise think you have o. So in something like tor or or, if you can compare that tower um, or ower, one who tows or one who owes, kind of weird combinations, but to uh, explain the point, uh, feel an articulatory difference between tor and tower. Aw is articulated by lowering the jaw and retracting the tongue, as well as pursing and protruding the lips with closure of the uh, velopharyngeal port and phonation produced by the larynx. The lowest of the back vowels is ah, referred to as script A. It is a low back tense and unrounded vowel, found in words like top, not, slob, cop, the first syllable of possum. It is the low back corner vowel, uh, a lot of times when uh, reading um, clinical descriptions or papers or things, there may not be a distinction between the script A symbol and the regular old A. Um, so uh, the script A may be used when writing by hand, for example, because that's easy to do. But when typing on a computer, what you usually get is the non-script version of the A, and that is sometimes just used for convenience. The ah is articulated by lowering the jaw and flattening and retracting the tongue, um, plus the usual closure of the velopharyngeal port and phonation happening. Uh, if you look at the image on the right, which has an x-ray tracing contrast of ah versus aw ah, um, in uh, uh, a speaker, the primary difference is very uh, small in tongue position, but there's quite a bit of difference in the lip position for the rounding for aw versus ah. In this articulatory configuration, uh, for ah, the oral cavity is relatively open, but the pharynx is constricted. Here we have an MRI image, again from the same speaker as the others, uh, showing the articulation of ah, where the tongue body has been um, brought back and is kept low, and as a result, much of the pharyngeal cavity is filled by the root of the tongue, um, and the oral cavity is relatively open. Distinctions between the back vowels can be highlighted by minimal pairs, pairs where the only difference is between these vowels. So in coop versus cope, we have oo versus o. In foot versus fought, we have u uh versus aw. Uh. In hot versus haughty, we have ah uh versus aw. Uh. In hall versus holly, we have aw uh versus ah. Uh. In uh, root versus rote, as in square root, we have oo uh versus aw. Uh. Whereas in uh, root versus rote, as in root beer, we have uh versus o, uh, at least in my dialect. Uh, in something like boar versus bar, uh, we have the distinction before r. And in fool versus full, we have that distinction before L in my dialect.